This is the webinar for the NCPMI targeted technical assistance application for pyramid model imp implementation, innovations, and systems building. Um, let's, let's go around uh, the room and introduce ourselves. I'm Barbara Smith with NCPMI and the University of Denver. Sarah, you want to introduce yourself? I'm Sarah Payton with NCPMI at the University of South Florida. Hello, everyone. Lisa? Hi, I'm Lisa Fox with National Center for Pyramid Model Innovations. Thanks for joining the call. Alyssa? I'm Alyssa Rausch, also from the University of Denver, and I am a staffer at NCPMI as well. And let me... I think we have one more person who is with us so far. Would you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, this is Jeanette Guerra and Marcy Kaplan in Maryland. Hi, Jeanette. Hi, Marcy. Hi. Hey, everybody. <laughs> you all are, it looks like um, unless something happens, you're going to get an individualized webinar. <laughs> Just for us. We feel special. <laughs> So feel free to jump in at any time. Um, I'm gonna just go through a few slides here for background, but mainly um, we're here to answer your questions and to have a conversation. Um, I'm sure you all have been on the new NCPMI website where we're pulling together, we have pulled together, thank you, Sarah, um, the uh, relevant materials and information from both the CEPHAL website and the TAXI website um, into this new beautiful website for NCPMI. Um, most of the materials and information we'll be using on this technical assistance are on this website and will be added as we go over the time. Um, and um, uh, one of the things that, given the expertise of the states that will be involved in this technical assistance, um, one of our goals is to learn from your experiences as well, and we may be developing some materials together that will wind up on the website. Um, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention is this webinar is being recorded. Um, I have been asked specifically by at least one state um, to record the website. So, um, Jeanette and Marcy, do you have any concerns about that? No. No. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so, this is our partners, the NCPMI partners. Um, we have National Technical Assistance partners, um, the Center for Parent Information and Resources, ECPC, ECTA, DAVI, and the Positive Behavior Interventions and Support um, Center. We also have a close collaboration with the Pyramid Model Consortium. And we have national professional associations that will help guide our work, um, as well as um, um, have offered to be dissemination partners with us. And you can see those, as you can see, the um, 619 Consortium and ITCA are two of those organizations. Actually, it's the 619 affiliate group now. So um, this is a really brief summary of NCPMI products and services. Um, under products, I have very gross, large categories of the kinds of products that we currently have and will continue to add to. Um, lots of things, of course, that explain the pyramid model and that people can use to explain the pyramid model to others. Um, we have materials and will be continuing to build out resources around equity and equity in services. We have quite a bit around eliminating suspension and expulsion and we'll continue to add to that. Same with inclusion, coaching, both program-wide coaching and um, practice-based coaching. 
family engagement, statewide implementation, and that's where a lot of the resources that will guide our work uh, rests. Data decision making, um, again, amazing, amazing tools and resources, both um, for use at the state level and at the program level and program-wide implementation. Under services, um, you know, we are a technical assistance center and uh, we have uh, a large part of our work scope is around providing service. We have Pyramid Model Fellows, which is a brand new concept for us. Um, they've been selected for the first two years and then we'll go through another application process for uh, two years after that. So we have Pyramid Model Fellows who are going to be working directly with um, uh, faculty of their choosing. And then I think you all are familiar with the three levels of technical assistance that OSEP has defined. Universal, which is literally that. It's technical assistance available to anyone. Um, those are resources off the website, webinars, conference presentations, the e-newsletter, which I hope you all are signed up for. If not, you can sign up on our website. The targeted technical assistance, which we're talking about today, is technical assistance that is virtual. It's not on, on site, um, and it's to a group of states, Part C, home visiting, um, which we have a targeted technical assistance going on right now, as well as a variety of other topics common to a group of states, but we offer and hope to be able to have individualized um, approaches as well. And one of the ways we do that is that we make sure there's an NCPMI staff person that works directly with a state over the period of time for that technical assistance. Um, so that to ensure that we're contextualizing, um, we're learning about your context uh, and meeting your individual needs. So we're gonna talk about that type of, tech, of targeted technical assistance today. And then we also offer intensive TA, which includes a lot of on-site very intensive. It's for two years. We have an intensive TA RFA out right now. Um, it's for two years. There'll only be two states selected and it's particularly for states that are really um, wanting to start their statewide implementation of the pyramid model. And finally, we uh, partner with USF and Pyramid Model Consortium to hold the National Training Institute. So let's talk about this targeted TA. The purpose specifically of this technical assistance is to have a group of states, either 619 or Part C leaders, together for up to two years to talk about how to take their pyramid model work and apply it to one of three innovations. Increasing high quality inclusion, increasing equity in services, and eliminating suspension and expulsion. And I said one of but that's kind of up for grabs. We're going to see what you all have um, identified as your need. And it may be that you want to focus on more than one of these topics. This technical assistance is uh, for states with extensive pyramid model implementation experience. Um, so this is not a technical assistance opportunity for states just getting started or who have spotty implementation. Um, and as you probably know, the application is on the website. It's web-based and the deadline is December 12th. So let's talk a little bit more about who's eligible. Um, 
and I don't I don't have the participant list. Have we had anybody else join us? Has anybody else joined us? Sarah? No. No. Sorry. No, 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 no one else has joined. We had Pam okay. join us here. <laughs> oh good. <laughs> we have a big Maryland team. I, 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 <laughs> I think that's that's great. Um you may not have a lot of competition. <laughs> Okay, so what we're looking for are states that have all four of the components of our implementation approach, this, a state leadership team, what we call a professional development network of program coaches. Those are people that have had a variety of different terms that we've used over the years, master cadre, um, external coaches, but they are the training and technical assistance people that work directly with programs, um, helping them implement program-wide. Implementation and demonstration sites with program leadership teams that are implementing the pyramid model program-wide, um, including having internal coaches versus those external coaches who are helping them and data systems. So all four of those components are in place. And the state leadership team is functioning well. And so um, we feel like that's important is uh, to help you launch into one or more than one of those big new areas. So, um, we can talk a little bit more about the state leadership team in a minute. The kinds of outcomes that we're hoping to achieve um, is that the state participants in the cohort will gain the knowledge, resources, and experiences to make measurable progress on your goals and objectives. One of the first things we'll do is um, work with you to identify what your goals and objectives for participation in the TA opportunity um, is, and then we want to make sure that we meet those goals and objectives with you. Secondly, um, we hope that you all uh, will become so familiar with any resources and tools that we have that can help you in this work. And as I mentioned earlier, if there are things that the center needs to create, maybe we'll create those things together. Um, and again, we'll be adding and creating new resources anyway as we go along. So for instance, one of the things that we're currently working on and hope to have completed um, at the end of this calendar year, at least enough for review, is a set of inclusions for high, or indicators of high quality inclusion. And um, we will help you access um, information and approaches that we know about, but we also hope that the cohort of states will be sharing those kinds of resources and approaches with each other that you have. Because these are experienced states and our, our lesson early on uh, was that uh, states take the information that we have available and do all kinds of wonderful new things with it. So the kinds of activities we'll engage in, I mentioned we will develop one, the very first thing we'll do is develop a TA agreement that has your measurable goals and objectives so that we can all make sure we're uh, on the same page and we're helping you to meet those goals and objectives. We will meet monthly for one and a half hours as a group. Um, those calls are, uh, the schedule will be the third Wednesday of every month for an hour and a half. There will be assignments between calls. There will be at least monthly uh, consultation with uh, your assigned NCPMI staff person. And uh, 
if possible, if you can get to NTI, which we hope you can, um, that we really hope to have a face-to-face -face meeting with the cohort. And finally, there will be some evaluation activities uh, evaluating the technical assistance. So, Jeanette and Marcy, uh, and Pam, what are your questions or comments? Hmm. Well, um, well, as you know, we're in the, we are participating in the Part C PA. Yep. Would you anticipate that we continue, if we were to do this and be selected, would we do both? Or how, or how different would the TA be? I'm going to throw that or include Lisa in on this conversation as well, but let me ask you first. What would you like to do? <laughs> do you have the resources and capability of participating in both? Um, that's probably a stretch right now. Um, and, le and let me tell you what, what I think we're thinking in terms of this. So right now, we are not in full implementation with the pyramid model with our four Part C SF counties. Okay. Uh -huh. What we're looking to do and why we thought we would be interested in this TA opportunity is we would like to build that through our birth to kindergarten system. And we if it seems like it makes sense to us to do that in those four counties that we're already starting. We've we've got some implementation of the pyramid model going on. And we have we have a state leadership team, although it is not specific to pyramid model. It's, it's specific to our ESSIP work, which the pyramid model is part of. Um, there is another state leadership team that is specific to CEPHAL that we're part of, but I don't feel like we can build, I mean, we would need to figure out a way to merge those two um, because I think we need both of people, both sets of people to do this. So I feel like we're kind of straddling <laughs> many of the requirements or some of the requirements. Let me ask you another question, then I'm going to toss it to Lisa. Um, as I read, well, I think that uh, if you were to choose an innovation area, it was going to be inclusion. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yes. yes. Okay. And you wanted to focus can, uh, birth to kindergarten? Yes. Okay. Lisa, thoughts? Hmm. So my thought is, so I think if, first of all, if you're going to do inclusion and you're going to do birth to kindergarten, you, the CEPHAL team is your state pyramid team, even though they call themselves the state CEPHAL team. Right. <laughs> so um, even though you have an SIP team, because an SIP team is about a specific kind of aligned to that specific requirement that OSIP has um, put on all systems. So, so the whole sustainable integration and scaling up really ought to happen with the state team as your bigger umbrella and then perhaps saying this would be the place that we could start are these three are they counties where you have the yeah there are four counties yeah, yeah. there's one county that i'm not sure is that yeah and that these three counties are good places for us to start with a birth to five inclusion effort and can you get on board with that and does that align with the work that they've already done now, whether or not that means you jump out of RTA or not, I don't, I don't know because we haven't worked well, long enough together to figure that out. However, what I would say to you is, should that be your goal and you want to do both EI as well as the um, classroom, toddler and preschool classroom implementation, we can 
in our in our targeted TA, if if you think it's just pointing you to the tools as they're developed and the practice training and to see if that's different than what you've already done. I know you have lots of pieces in place and maybe those are the really added things that you pull out of our um, resources for uh, bolstering your Part C implementation and fidelity of implementation. And then we help you also to figure out what to pull in around the inclusion pieces. But um, keep in mind, targeted TA is really pointing you to the resources. You do all the work, we do all the consultation. <laughs> and, um, and so you have to kind of assess, and that's part of this application process, I believe, is where's our capacity? What are our missing pieces that we'll be asking you all to deliver? Um, so you could still hang in with the targeted TA calls on social, on uh, CMS to see as we roll things out. Or you could just say, we only have the bandwidth to be on one targeted TA call. We're gonna be working really deeply in a, our state with a state team. And we'll, key, we'll be asking our NCPMI staff person who helps us to direct us to those Part C materials as they're developed and available for people to use. Okay. Did I answer it right, Barbara? <laughs> <laughs> well, as far as I'm concerned, you did, but I don't know about uh, Jeanette, Marcy, and Pam. Um, yeah. You know, uh, this one starts, the first call is in Jen. Well, let me, let me back up. If you feel like you meet the application requirements. Um, I would apply. If you don't apply, you don't get to decide. <laughs> if you apply, you get to decide. And the first call isn't until the middle of January. If you stayed in for a couple of calls on both TA centers, I think you'd have a lot more information to go on in making this decision. Yep. Um, so what do y'all think? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, what if we do not have two state benchmarks of quality ratings completed? Does the um, does the CEPL team? No, the CEPL team doesn't have any. Our SIT team has the old benchmarks of quality. We just did that one. And we actually actually had have had several rounds of that. Yes. But very honestly, we finally as a team really dug into what each of those benchmarks really means and looks like in Maryland. And and so previous versions of that that folks did, it wasn't it wasn't done really, I would say you, you couldn't even really use that data because it wasn't done to, you know, really accurately of really what was going on. Right. And the way we did it was we had, we, we did it together in four yeah. jurisdictions, each did it. And then as a state team, we looked across the four and said, okay, what, what do we need to prioritize here? What do we want to set some goals around? Um, and then they did that also with their local teams. So did you, did you come to a consensus across the four counties on one BOQ? So do you have one BOQ or do you have four? We, we, have, four. we have four. We have it all in, um, we have the data all together. Um, and then we have goal statements based on the four, but it's a state goal to, I can't remember the exact wording, it, it's but. It's basically to increase tier one yeah. practices. I mean, that's what, where we're starting. But that's on the old benchmark. So we have a state team meeting this week on Friday where we're gonna talk about the new one that we got in the part C TA and figure out how we, how we, how we move to that. So let me do a clarification. 
um, Barb is referring to, and what we're referring to in the application are the state implementation benchmarks. Right. Yes, we've used many names for many of the different tools. And what we shared with you on our Part C call was a benchmarks of quality really intended more for the program level or for you for that county level. Right. Um, the state benchmarks of quality is in the state implementation guide that's on the ECTA website. That's the uh, or you can access it on challengingbehavior.org. So it's a little different. It's a higher level, um, and it really is about your team and your state infrastructure versus the program level infrastructure. Right. So that one, neither of our teams have completed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's kind of a problem. Um, the reason being, um, that's, so that BOQ, the state level BOQ, looks at statewide implementation. Right. Looks at um, your professional development system statewide. It looks at how you're using data statewide. It looks at how you're setting up and monitoring and supporting sites statewide. Um, and it looks at what we think are the critical elements of a state leadership team. Mm -hmm. So without that information, well, let me put it positively. That if we put that in as a requirement because that's the kind of information that helps us help you take your pyramid model work deeply into one of these innovations. Yeah. In other words, if we know how many sites you have, if we know what your professional development network looks like, um, if we know what kind of data you're currently collecting, we know how to help you build on that. Without that information, we're, we're working in a void. Um, so I think we'd have to talk about um, how to address that, you know. Um, so I'm gonna back up. I think that to build on what Lisa said, I do think uh, your quote unquote, supple state team, um, has it always had what is the age range it has always looked at or is looking at currently? Is it birth to kindergarten? Yes. Okay. Yeah. But primarily the, the school age, right? I mean, primarily preschool, no? Not necessarily because it's, it, it the, the majority of participants in that are ECMHCs. And so they're working in child cares and preschools. Um, okay. So, okay. so that could be younger. Yeah. Um, this is just Marcy, and I have not looked, I don't believe I've looked at the state um, benchmarks of quality, but we've been participating with Mary Louise in the access equity um, inclusion technical assistance. And we've done our self-assessment. We're, we're wrapping up the self-assessment um, and we're meeting with her um, to complete the other assessment. Is that related to this? Because we were, we were hoping that the work that we've been doing with the inclusion um, and inclusive practices would be able to be subsumed within this technical assistance. Um, so is that related? Because we are we are completing that. It's not related to the BOQ. I'm not I actually all that familiar specifically with that self-assessment, but I totally agree that it sounds like an initiative that you would want to um, bring into this work. Right. Um, so let me explain a little bit more about our vision around this TA. Uh, we, we had a, our vision was that the participating states would have these four components in place so that, for instance, when we start looking at 
how you're providing training and technical assistance to programs or counties, um, we would be talking about and planning how to embed your inclusion effort in that, in that training and technical assistance. Um, same with your data pieces, um, collecting data. So what would you add to current data collection systems that would give you, that would tell you about progress on your inclusion initiative? So it's, to use your term, embedding the innovation in with pyramid model work. But the pyramid model work would be, was our vision was that it would be running so smoothly across those four elements, a state leadership team, a professional development network of external coaches, um, uh, implementation sites, some of which would be demonstration sites um, at Fidelity and data collection. Uh, so you would have all of those structures in place and it would be a matter of using those then to advance inclusion or equity or eliminate suspension and expulsion. So does that make sense what we were looking for and why? It does make sense, yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I think we need to talk about this some more and go back to our the state CEFO leadership team, um, which we have a meeting next week with them and kind of figure this out. Um, you know, the state leadership if that group of people that call themselves the SEFL leadership team has not been using the benchmarks of quality to drive their work. Yep. Um, yep. Uh, that's, that's a problem. Issue. Yeah, I would agree. Um, because, and I've said this many times, is that the focus has just been on training people in SEFL. That's all it, just professional development without looking at the, the whole model and the infrastructure, even in just programs, much less the state. Um, so maybe just, you know, just having participated in this conversation <laughs> with you all and um, even this application can be something I can bring to the team and say, we, we need to, we need a little more direction here. We need to be using the benchmarks um, to guide our work at the state in the state leadership team um, and then maybe a year or two from now we'll be ready to do this <laughs> well you know what it's what I'm thinking and I don't want you want you to take this negatively um, tomorrow we're having our first our second phone call with our cohort of states that are in the exploration and planning um, uh, of the pyramid model. And it really is something you might want to think about. We talked about this early, early on. Um, there are states, there's two, at least two of the states in that cohort that have at least two, there may be three, that have been implementing pyramid model work in one form or another for as long as Maryland has. Huh. But they felt, they, they knew they didn't have the four essential structures, mm -hmm. knew that their state leadership team needed to rethink what they were doing and who they were and who was on that team and and they hadn't been doing benchmarks of quality, hadn't been collecting data. They had been doing a lot of training. So, um, and one of the states really had, uh, Tennessee decided to come into that and they came on the CEFL the same time Maryland did. And they, they stalled, their state leadership team work stalled out and lost funding 
Um, they've tried to continue their pyramid work, but uh, it's really been, it's really fallen sort of to the wayside. So they wanted to start again, basically. Um, and another state just wanted to make sure they knew how to set up the professional development network of program coaches. Um, so you would not be alone <laughs> if you decided to join that group and I could easily catch you up. Couldn't we, Alyssa? I mean, tomorrow's our second call. Um, and that team, that group meets once a month as well for an hour and a half. And what we're going to start in December is a really deep dive into the state implementation guide. And we're going to go through each essential structure with each state and make sure that uh, it, that it is clearly understood what the purpose of it is. And that by the end of the TA that those, those four essential structures are being put into place. Barbara, yeah, I think, I think we were hoping, um, because we have such great momentum right now with our SF work and that state leadership team, um, and what we're doing with pyramid model there, we were hoping that we could build on that, but we, I certainly, we understand what you're saying about the state pyramid model leadership team and, and what we need to do. Um, so another option might be given that you have some capacity and have scaled in different kinds of ways, although it's not all integrated, right. um, but it would be huge leap is the intensive TA. So right. you know, intensive TA would be you get two years of on site, let's put all the pieces together. Um, and you know, we don't do pyramid minus inclusion or pyramid minus equity. So all of that would be a part of the focus um, in that work. But we have an application for intensive TA open right now. It says the 619 has to be the lead, but that doesn't mean that you couldn't um, propose, and it says it's pre-K, but you could come in and say, really want it to be birth to five and here are all the resources we have. I mean, that might be too quick for you. I don't remember the application deadline. It's soon. Um, but that's another path. If, um, if you feel like you really have a lot moving and you want to build on that momentum. Yeah, I don't think we're ready for that. Uh, <laughs> I think I think we really need to go back. We're, we haven't been, quote, you know, quote, the lead with the state mm -hmm. federal leadership team. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. We're, we're a partner at, at the table. Um, there's another division within Got the it. State Department of Education that has been kind of leading more of those efforts through their ECMHC work. Yes. Um, so I think that's where we have work to do is, is to kind of get everybody on that team on the same page and and some direction. I think they've been looking for direction. We've been looking for direction with that team. So I think this would help us do that. Mm -hmm. um, and we have lessons learned that we can share from our SF work with that team. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And actually, um, so that could be an extension of your TA from us of the Part C SF TA is how do we approach that bigger team? Um, having those conversations, if we can facilitate it at all, helping people wrap their head around it could be something that I could assist you with if you want to do, if, if you don't want to sign up for another TA to make that happen, but just kind of stick with what you're doing. It's fine. Oh, that's, that's an interesting thought. Yeah. I mean, because I could see, yeah, I, I could see us, you know, trying to sort of begin that conversation with the state leadership team next yeah. week yep. but then it may really be nice to have Lisa facilitating something yeah. sure. more officially with that team yeah yeah and Lisa you all are using the state implementation guide or will use the state implementation. yeah we just haven't begun to explore it yet because we were working on our benchmarks and practices because that's what people are really eager to get and then that'll help us put those pieces together but I think we'll be talking about it soon as soon as January okay oh, well yeah 
And so, then some of these other resources like the indicators of high quality inclusion that you talked about, we would still have access to? Of course, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Yeah, we, you will, once you're in our fold, we don't, won't let you go. So don't worry. <laughs> hasn't happened yet. <laughs> okay. All right. So we are recording this so we can share it with others. And I wonder if we ought to do the other more generic questions in case others hop on this recording and um, also have additional questions unless Marilyn has additional questions. Do you all have any more? I don't think so. No, no. I don't think so. Thank you. Well, So, this actually might be helpful for you all, or you can hop off if you want to. So, Lisa, um, shall I just look through these questions? Yeah, let's just walk through them, just in case people listening to the recording might have these questions. Okay. So, the first question is, our leadership has moved to quarterly meetings. Is that going to be a problem with our eligibility? And the answer is uh, no. Just the frequency of meetings is not an issue, and oftentimes uh, state leadership teams that, have, that um, are humming along really well find that they don't need to meet monthly. Um, we've developed our own tool to reform our PM work. Do we need to use the benchmarks of quality? Yes. <laughs> forget about that today. The benchmarks of quality we've now worked on for uh, 15 years um, and we find that uh, it really does, uh, the items are critical both at the state level for the state bench more so quality as well as the program level. Our program coaches are employees of another organization. Is that a problem? No. Um, the program coaches, if they are fulfilling the work that is outlined in the state implementation guide and the state benchmarks of quality, um, it doesn't matter to us who employs them or, or what the institutional structure is for them. It's the outcomes that we're interested in. We want to focus on disproportionality in special education in our state. Is that appropriate for this TA? Um, not really, um, because mainly we, we haven't focused on that. We don't have the resources and the supports um, around disproportionality in special ed and in referrals and um, all of that systems, uh, that's a whole nother system that we really haven't delved into. We've really looked at disproportionality um, in preschool, mainly, and early intervention. Lisa, do you wanna add to that? Well, yeah, I think our area of expertise is around social, emotional, and behavior. And so when we address equity issues, it, um, in the pre-K world or in classrooms, it's through that lens and where disproportionate discipline or disproportionate inappropriate discipline actions occur. I think also um, that brings us to the conversation about culturally responsive practices. So in the EI work, equity questions are probably around how do we design systems so that they're optimally response, culturally responsive and encourage and support and promote family engagement um, to access services. So it's not really disproportionality in referral question, um, that kind of work. Um, let's see, the next general question is, we established our coaching network before the practice-based coaching model was fully developed. Um, is that gonna be a problem? Again, we're interested in outcomes. So if you're finding that you have a coaching model that's being used in the programs for practitioners um, that is giving you the kinds of data that indicate that their practices um, are improving, particularly related to being measured by the teapot or the tippy toes, um, no, we don't, we're, not, we're not suggesting that we fix something that isn't broken. 
But if it's not giving you those kinds of data, then we need to talk about that. And finally, we're currently engaged in other types of technical assistance. Is that an issue? Um, well, Marilyn, you, you all started off with that question. <laughs> so it's a conversation. I think that um, generally, no, um, but you need to make sure that you've got the capacity and the resources to be involved in more than one technical assistance at a time. We understand that um, while we think we're bringing great resources and services, it's also time consuming and it's a resource capability issue. Um, sometimes it's better to stagger them. Um, so it's important for us, I think, to know what kinds of technical assistance and for what purpose so that um, if possible, we can uh, coordinate the efforts to help build and build on your capacity. Alyssa, Lisa, y'all have anything you wanna add? Sarah? I don't think so. So Jeanette, Marcy, and Pam, um, do you have any, did that jumpstart any other kinds of questions or thoughts for you? No, I don't think so. Thank you. Confirmed. Well, confirmed, yeah. It confirmed. <laughs> You're confirmed, <laughs> okay. We were having before. Yeah. And it's, it's actually started a, a whole new depth of conversation with us. Well, I'm glad, and we are here for you. So continue to have these conversations with us. We really wanna support you in your important work. Um, and the issue is, what do we have that can actually do that for you? And um, let us know. Thank you. Right, thank you. Okay, well. Thank you. I'm glad you all were on and um, continue to let us know how we can support you. We Thank will. You all. Bye, everybody.